Residential application is the single most defining factor in return air locations. Let's talk about it. Welcome back, I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're gonna talk about return air locations in a room. When using ACA Manual T terminal selection, there are several basic rules that are followed regarding location. Most of these guidelines revolve around room air circulation and stagnant air, but depending on the application, there are some recommendations as to where to locate the return air grill. First, let's talk about heating only applications. In this application, a low return grill, low on the wall, is best to pull back that cool air in the space. Keep in mind, this is true regardless of the location of the supply air, whether it's low or higher in the ceiling. I remember learning this at a very early age when I used to lie down next to the return air grill in my grandparents' house because they used to circulate the air when they were using their wood stove. As we know, hot air rises, and I'm gonna leave the building analysts to discuss if this is true with science and buoyant air. I'm not gonna get into that. Either way, we know in the heating season that the cool, stagnant air remains low in the space. So, most of these return air registers that are in the floor work great with heating only applications. Now, let's flip the script to cooling only applications. We wanna return that warm, stagnant air that's high in the space. Ceiling registers for return air work really easy with attic-based systems, and this is because of ease of installation. Also, adding a return duct to every room keeps this house within balance regarding depressurization and improves air circulation and getting that moisture back to that air handler. Now remember, in the cooling season, that warm, stagnant air tends to build up near the ceiling. Why do contractors think a return air path by undercutting doors for spaces is actually a good idea? doesn't make much sense to me. Now you're gonna to have to depressurize the space in order to pull that air back. And this tends to happen a lot in the Northeast. I still see one central return located in hallways, let's say of the second floor of a Cape or Colonial home. When you do this, you're not gonna pull the stagnant warm air back. You're gonna get good circulation, but you're gonna have hot and cold spots in the room, and there's gonna be a lot of variance in the temperature when you go from your ankles to your head. All right, so we already touched on heating only and cooling only applications. What about a heating and cooling application? One where there's a furnace and an A-coil or a heat pump installed. I'm gonna be honest here, we're gonna to have to decide and pick knowing that we're gonna have a performance issue on one season or the other. Most homeowners are not gonna let you put a return air grill, let's say mid wall in a bedroom. That is, unless you have a high low wall combination for return grills. The problem with these are most people are using the inside of the cavity as the return air path and it's not sealed. So it's not necessarily pulling the air from the space. It could be from the cavity of the wall or the other side of the wall. So this is not recommended. If you are actually going to duct it, that's probably the best solution for heating and cooling applications. So this leaves you with making a choice if you're gonna use something up high or something down low for return air paths in an application that use heating and cooling. Here in the Northeast, a lot of people choose the low return air path because we have way more heating hours than cooling hours. As you move south, I'm willing to bet you choose the opposite because you have more cooling hours than heating hours. You're gonna pull that air from up high where the stag stagnant warm air is. But keep in mind, if you're replacing a furnace in the Northeast, most of these furnaces actually have higher volume of air than the older version. This is because the high efficiency furnaces that you're replacing, right? You're taking out the lower efficiency, lower volume of air furnaces that used to let a lot of heat go out the chimney and replacing them with a high efficient furnace that needs more volume of air to deliver the heat to the space, not out the chimney. Right now we have PVC vent. Because of this, the stagnant spaces in the room actually tend to shrink because we're moving the volume of air through the same register faster with more volume. This results in a more comfortable space for that homeowner in the heating season. But keep in mind what happens in the cooling season when we switch over and we try to force all that volume of air through poorly designed ducts and maybe the incorrect registers for throw. We're gonna have an uncomfortable, unhappy homeowner. They're gonna tell you this system never worked right from the start, but the old system used to be so much better and quieter. What I'm gonna say is you need to open your eyes sometimes. Think outside the box of the air handler and the refrigerant charge when it comes to air conditioners. Please look at the distribution for once. 
Thanks for joining me at HVAC Pro Blog this week, where we're providing advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.